Hey, how are you doing, everybody? This is Alfred from Practical Code Academy. In the previous video, we covered how you can add icons to your binds and how you can use the icon bind component in your applications. In today's video, I will go over how you can use the toggle bind group or using toggle bind in general. So I will start by creating a new component file here, MUI bind or toggle bind create uh, a functional component, React functional component, or AFCE, save. And now we need to import a couple of components from the React material UI library. So I will import, I will open curly brackets from MUI material library. And the components that I'm going to bring in or import here is the toggle bind group. And you can select it here. We need to, to group the toggle binds. And we're going to select the toggle button itself. And I'm going to use typography as well to add some text to my screen. I will add a fragment here. And inside the fragment, I will start by typing a typography here. We're using the typography component. And I'm going to add some text, toggle, button. And now I'm going to start creating or grouping my toggle binds. So I will use the toggle bind group component. And it's a wrapping component where I wrap all my toggle binds. And now inside my binds, I want some icons. So I can do that by going to the MUI. I can even search for MUI icons to search for the icons that I want. And I can search for the format or formatting icon. which is format. I will get the bold, this one, this icon here. So I need to import the icon as a component. I'll paste it here. I will also search for another uh, icon here. It's going to be the format italic is this icon, copy it, and finally get another icon, which is going to be the format underline. Format underline. Once you copy all the icons and you add them to your component here, now I can start using them. So for every single icon, I'm going to wrap it with the toggle bind component. So every single toggle bind will have an icon inside it. And the first icon is the format bold icon. And I can create another toggle bind here. And I can put the underline, the format underline icon, and the final bind group or the toggle bind that I want to add here will be for the format. I already used the bold, the underline, so it's the italic icon. And if you save your file now, you have three binds grouped or three toggle binds grouped with the toggle bind group, and you have just a title or some text here as a toggle bind. And now if you take a look, refresh the page, and it's not loading because I need to add it to the app.js. I need to load the component here. So I'm going to comment the previous component and add MUI toggle bind. And this is the component. I import the component to the app.js, save the app.js. Take a look, fresh. Here we go.
<clears throat> so we have this toggle binds. We can toggle any of their states. And to keep track of the state, we need to use React state in that case. So what I need to do here, I need to create a state. And you can call the state anything you want. So constant, I'm going to call it format or formats set format I'm going to use react use state and it will import the use state from the react library and here we can have multiple formats so i'm going to put an empty array as the initial state and now i need to create a function here that when the user click any of these binds it will handle that and it will set the formats for me. So I can create a function and I can give it a name, handle format change. So every time we change the format, it will receive, receive the event object. So I can put E here and I'm going to set my formats based on it's not only going to receive the event object, it will have another uh, function input in that case is going to be the new value. And I'm going to set my formats, which in that case is going to be an array. I'm going to call it new value. So it's going to be always the second uh, input into your function. And to take a look at this, you can console.log new value. And now I have this function here sitting, not doing anything. I need to connect it with that toggle bind group in that case. So the toggle bind group, its value will be connected with the state, which is formats. And in that case, also on change, when the user change any of the formats or any of the uh, toggle bind states, I want this function to be executed. So in that case, I can pass the name of the function, which is handle format change. And by that, every time the user click in any of this toggling binds, he will register a state that will be registered in our array and we're printing the array to the console so we can take a look at it and if we take a look at the console.log get undefined empty array undefined empty array and the reason for that we get empty and undefined because we never set the values for the individual toggle binds so I can put the value here and the value for this bind, it's actually bold. So it will make the text bold and the value for this bind will be italic and the value for this bind. This actually is the underline. And for this one, it's gonna be the italic. So as you can see, the value for every single bind is text. And at the end, your state will have an array of text. So every time you click on any of these toggle binds, the value will be registered or stored in this array, and it will be updated to your state, and your function will receive it as the second input here. Now let's take a look. Okay, clear that. And it's always start with undefined. So I have this issue. Let me refresh the page. There we go. So I already clicked on that. Notice when I, it's, it's highlighted that it's already clicked. I can toggle its state. I can unclick it. When I click bold, you will see the bold here, add it to your array. When I click on it again, now I have empty array. I can click multiple items bold, underline, and italic. Now your state will have the whole three 
strings. But now the question is, I want to use my state to reflect these formats on the text here, like the toggle button, I want it to be either bolded, underlined, or to be italized. First, let me give it a margin of two here for everything. I can use here a div, and I can inline style it. And in inline styling, you pass here the CSS margin of two pixels, just to give it some space. Two pixels is not enough. Let me get it. Eight pixels. Okay, good. Actually, I'll make it 20 pixels. There we go. And also for this uh, typography, I can use the SX to pass some CSS here. I'm going to do M, which is short for margin. And I can pass, let's say, two, in that case, 16 pixels. Two will get multiplied by eight. There we go. Now, as I said, the whole goal or the whole idea, when I click in the, the, this icon here for the, the format bold, I want this text to be bolded. When I click in the underline, I want this text to be, uh, actually, this is a mistake. This should be saying, oh, it's correct. Underline, it's been removed, and the italic been removed. So here, underline, italic, and bolded. Okay, so let's see how we can use all the states or the state array in order to reflect these formats to the text. What you can do is here in the SX, I want to set the font weight to make the text bold or not. Font weight property based on my formats state. And it's array, and I can use the includes. That's a JavaScript function. So I want to check if this array includes bold. And I can use here the ternary operator. If it's true, I want to give it the font weight to be 900. However, if it's not true, else I want to give it a 400. Same for the text decoration, where I can control the underline. Text decoration property, I want to check is my state array includes underline. If that's true, I want to set the text decoration to be underlined. Otherwise, I want to remove the underline if the underline is not in my state array. Finally, I want to set my font style to either italic or not. Formats dot include italic, and if this true, I will uh, set it to italic, the font style. Otherwise, I will set it to a normal text. As you can see, now all the CSS properties for this text will be updated dynamically based on my formats state. And if you save that, And you go back here, you will notice that the text will be bolded, underlined, and italic text. And the reason because all of them are selected. If I remove the underline, you'll notice that the underlines get removed. The italic, now it's not italic, it's normal text. And the bolded, now it's normal. And you can control any of the states here. And you can see how this is interactive. Perfect. What else you can use? You can use another prop here for the toggle button group. 
and this prop is called exclusive. And it's a Boolean prop. It's either there or not. If it's there, you're not going to be allowed to select multiple buttons. Only one button will be selected every time. So let me save that. And if I click this button, now it's italic. If I try to select the underline, notice now that the italic is not selected anymore. And if I select the bold, now it's bolded and it's not going to allow that both of them toggle states to be on. Only one state here. And of course, in that case, your state will hold a string. It's not going to hold an array. And actually, we can verify that because we keep printing them to the console.log. And I can show the console.log. As you can see here, we're printing a string. We're not printing an array. OK. And of course, you can change. Let's see what other props that you can use with this. If you press the Control N here and the space, it will give you all the props that you can use. Of course, we can set the color primary. If you set that to primary, you will see here that the text will be blue. And there you go, it's working. And of course, you can change the color to secondary. And by default, it's outlined by, as you can see. Let me see if the variant here, you can't use the variant prop. And of course, you can always check uh, the documentation to see what other props that you can use with the toggle bind group or the toggle bind. For example, I can go to the MUI here. I can search for toggle bind. And that will give me um, <clears throat> the examples of how to use it. But the component API where the documentation of all the props is here. You always look for the component API. And if you take a look at the component API, you will see that all these props, you can use it with the toggle pine, an individual toggle pine. So in that case, you can set the color, standard primary, and on change, on click selected to be Boolean, true or false, and the size, of course, you can use the size. So let's use the color for the individual. Color, primary. Now let's see, that's the first pine. Here we go, it's primary. And I don't know why it's doing that, let's check. Console, what kind of errors we have here? Reading includes, because we're having includes, because we're dealing with it as an array of strings. Now we, since we put exclusive, now it's only getting you not an array of strings, just a string. So I can actually comment the exclusive here. So you can understand that you can use it. So the exclusive will be commented. And I shouldn't, I shouldn't get this error anymore. And as you can see, the first bind is indeed primary. And you can set the color here secondary and the final one here color error as you can see this have a secondary color and the last one have an error color okay guys i hope you like this video and find it helpful if you have any question please put it in the comments and in the next video we're going to go over uh, the link component because you can use links in that case, and you can format them as buttons, but we'll go over the link component. It's have its own component in the MUI library. We're going to go over the link, how you can use it in your application and projects.